So what's going on guys, Kate is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 8 biggest mistakes that new players make in Time Asia. So at the start I will explain why you want to get all the plague weapons, then where you should spend your skill points, then as well how can you prevent enemies from regaining HP back very quickly and much more. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then let's move over to the first mistake that new players make, and it is that most players don't deflect the enemy attack. So you can press your left bumper on the controller just before the enemy attack, and if you time it correctly then this will deflect the enemy attack. Deflecting enemy attack will negate any damage done to you, but instead it will deal damage back to the enemy. In Time Asia, the combat can get quite tricky and hard at some times, so timing this correctly can be a difference between winning or losing a fight. The talent tree gives you some flexibility in your approach. So, for example, you can increase the time you have to deflect, but this will reduce the damage that you will inflict. Or on the other hand, you can decrease the time you have to reflect, and in return you will deal more damage than per usual. So then the second mistake is that a lot of players have come from the other Souls-like games, and they usually spam their dodge 24-7. And yes, using dodge to escape is very important, but you don't want to use it too much, because when you're dodging too much, you're not doing damage, which will allow the enemy to regain his health back. So for example, your character will perform an extended slide, when you dodge twice, or you can also dodge offensively towards your enemy, to quickly charge at them and then do quick damage. But then on the other hand, you can choose to have a short dodge, to have the ability to use it more often, and it's mainly used for close quarter fights. So don't forget to stop only dodging, but depending on the enemy and fight, implement different attacks, and this will make your gameplay experience a lot more enjoyable and easier. So in Time Asia, each enemy has their unique weapons and different functionalities. So for example, some can knock back enemies, some can heal you, some can even let you jump in the air and much more. What most players don't use is this mechanic, so you can take your enemy's weapon and use it against them. What you need to do is hold down the right trigger on the controller or the right mouse button, and you hold it for a second to fully charge your character's Corvus Claw, and then release it to get the weapon. Charge Claw aka using the enemy weapon deals even more damage to the enemy wounds and prevents them from healing. Your character will be vulnerable while charging your Corvus Claw, so I recommend to mainly charge them when your enemies are dazed or stunned. Getting this reefed plague weapon is a one-time use only, however you can carry up to 3 different weapons, and players either way keep forgetting that or don't know. And most people think that if something is one-time use only, then you can only have one of the weapons. But no, this is incorrect. Every character can carry up to 3 different plague weapons at the same time, especially if you use the correct talents, which I will cover in a different video. But mainly you can unlock 2 plague weapon slots through the skill shards, and then the last one by eliminating a boss in a battle. So then let's talk about the block, and we quickly talked about deflecting the enemy attack, however this is not the only way to escape from the enemy damage. So what you want to do is instead of deflecting you can as well just block the enemy attack altogether. This will of course reduce your overall damage, but if you don't have the best reaction time, then this can be a simple solution to avoid the enemy damage. When the enemy has a green indicator right over their head, this means that they are right about to charge in with a critical attack. These cannot be deflected, so to escape critical attacks your only option is to use a dodge, but all the normal attacks you can easily block. So if you don't have the best reaction, then this is a less efficient but easier way to protect yourself. So then for the fifth mistake we have that most players use the feather attack wrong. So the feather attack is another important part of your character's arsenal. Its main purpose is to stun the enemy and stop any incoming critical attack. When a green light indicator appears before the enemy attack, they will perform a critical attack that cannot be deflected, so the only two options for you is to move out of the range or use the feather attack. A feather attack you can perform by using your left controller trigger or the mouse button to throw a feather to interrupt the enemy attack and wound them right before their critical attack hits you, but not right after the green light appears. This indicator is not a quick time event, but instead the indicator is a warning not a prompt to throw a feather right away. So then when you successfully interrupt a critical attack, you will leave the enemy wide open and vulnerable for a short period, which will allow you to get few easy extra attacks before the enemy starts attacking you all over again. So don't forget to take the advantage of every second that the enemy is stunned. 
So then let's move over to one of the biggest mistakes and it is that players either way want to be the jack of all trades and don't specialize in the right skill tree. So as you can see overall there are 4 different skill trees. These are very important and will determine on what type of playstyle you will get out of your character. So for example as you level up your feather attack in the talent tree there are multiple routes you can go. You can simply upgrade the range attack and deal more damage to the enemy and regenerate feathers quicker or you can turn the feather attack into a dash ability. Then another example is that the basic move for a claw attack is a long claw. It's slow but charges forwards allowing your character to keep a distance. Then another example is that the basic move for a claw attack is a long claw. It's slow but charges forwards allowing your character to keep a distance between you and the enemy and you will also deal very high damage. But then on the other hand you can as well switch to the short claw in the talent tree. However the short claw will do a lot of very quick attacks that deal tons of damage in a few seconds. So this is up to you, do you prefer more sustained damage or short damage bursts? So don't sleep on the talent tree, for each category decide what you prefer more damage and short range or more range and easier defenses and etc. Then when you have picked only focus on maximizing that one tree, because then you will get most out of it. So then as for the next mistake, we have that players fight the boss the wrong way and not understanding the mechanics behind it. So then let's move over to the boss fights in Timesia. And like in all Souls-like games, this will be the hardest part of the game. Usually bosses will be found at the end of your quest or dungeon and the bosses will usually have multiple cutscenes at the beginning, middle or end of the fight. As you can already guess, each boss has multiple HP bars or lives which are indicated by these white squares. So to eliminate a boss if he has two lives, you have to get that bar twice to zero. Against bosses you don't want to deflect nor block their attacks, but instead you want to only use dodge. Against bosses the dodge is the only best choice, because the rest mechanics will take either way too long of a time, or what usually happens is that if you try to block or deflect and you either way are too early or too late, then you will get punished severely and you can get even one shotted. So don't forget that the best and only way to escape boss or elite enemy attacks is to use your dodge. So then moving over to the last and final mistake and it is that players allow enemies to linger for too much and this will allow them to get back to full health in few seconds. You will often see two colors on the enemy health bar, white and green. The white bar represents their total health and the green bar is the amount of wounds on the enemy. You will need to empty both of them to finish an enemy. When the enemy's health and wounds are both to zero, they will become dazed which then you can approach the enemy and execute them. Whenever you're dealing damage to the enemies, you will passively inflict wounds, which then will heal after a short period if no more damage is inflicted. So this means that if you don't utilize the claw mechanic, your enemy will quickly regain his health back. To prevent this we want to use the claw mechanic. Claw attacks are very effective on the wounds and can absorb the plague energy. So to use the claw you need to press Y or triangle depending on your controller and that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Tamesia guides or tutorials that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace. Yo, I'm here.